Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. The main storyline this week should be the countdown to Harry's 40th birthday on Sunday. Word is Harry will have a party in California. Royal expert Lydia Alty told The Express they will likely throw a lavish party and invite friends over around his birthday. Meghan and Harry have many friends in Hollywood, so it will definitely be a huge bash whatever they do. Who knows, they may even sell inside pictures of the party to the media. More interesting and tied to recent rumours is that Harry wanted to have the party in the UK. An insider told Closer, Harry was very keen to go to the UK and party with his friends and he still would if Meghan let him. But she's saying, absolutely not. For one thing, it's a bad look for their brand. They're hoping to hang out with the creme of society, with the Hollywood and political elite. So the idea of him knocking shots and acting like a fool with his pals in Mykonos or wherever is just the worst possible idea. While there's little expectation that any members of the royal family will make the trip across the Atlantic for the party, many believe that the family will acknowledge Harry's birthday publicly, thanks to a rule introduced by the late Queen. According to royal expert Charles Ray, this rule ensures that non-working royals receive public greetings when their birthdays end in a zero, which usually signals a significant milestone. Speaking to GB News, Ray explained that this rule means that Prince Harry should expect a public birthday message from senior royals, including King Charles, despite the tension that has been widely reported between Harry and the rest of the family. Although the royal family's social media channels have largely avoided discussing Harry, failing to acknowledge his birthday could be perceived as an intentional snub, deepening the rift between them. In The Telegraph, Hannah Furness writes of Harry's life in Montecito. She tells us, His day-to-day life does indeed seem enviable. There is meditation, a 30 to 40 minute session each day scheduled in to make sure it happens, and exercise, formerly at Barry's boot camp in LA more recently with personal trainers. He chats with his staff, enjoys the garden, marvels at the local birds, does the school run and walks the dogs. He and the Duchess have been seen occasionally at local steakhouse Lucky's and upmarket Italian restaurant Tre Lune. The friends they are seen with are high-powered millionaires, billionaires, business leaders, successful entrepreneurs and producers. Even their chickens are well-connected. When Ellen DeGeneres, the comedian and fellow Montecito resident, noticed her chicken, Sinky, being bullied by other birds after breaking its leg, it was the Sussexes she called on to rehome in their large coop. I love to rescue Megan has said. Normally when you see him around here, he's walking his Labrador on the beach or on his bicycle followed by his security in a Range Rover, says a neighbour. They keep themselves to themselves. I haven't seen Harry around much. The Duchess is spotted slightly more regularly at the farm's market or out to lunch with friends, and she is said to have joined a Mahjong group, a traditional Chinese board game, getting a new lease of life with Gen Z and described by its players as the new book group. There are some subtle signs of American celebrification too. Harry's accent has shifted to swap T's for D's, and details of his designer outfits have started to appear in news reports alongside those of his wife's wardrobe. Patrick Jepson, Princess Diana's former private secretary, recently suggested that Prince Harry should drop out of public life and keep his mouth shut. In an interview with The Sun, Jefferson questioned Harry's current role, saying, What is Harry for? No one can really answer that, and I'm not sure if he can. Royal expert Kinsey Schofield told GB News, Victimhood has been very lucrative for Harry, and reading that headline about a possible return, instinctively you feel sympathy for him, and he is positioning the royal family as the bad guys again. And this is another ploy when it comes to Harry and Meghan. He's doing it because Americans did not welcome them in the way that they initially thought they would. I think they've made a lot of missteps over the last few years and not having the life they thought they were going to. I don't think the American dream has come to fruition from the way that they thought it would, and Prince Harry now realises that he was a valuable asset as a member of the royal family, and that really gave him purpose. Palace Intrigue will be right back. King Charles is not just passionate about horses and dogs. His love for red squirrels is a surprisingly heartwarming aspect of his life. As patron of the Red Squirrel Survival Trust since 2009, King Charles has worked to protect the red squirrel population in the UK, which has been threatened by invasive grey squirrels. 
Charles' conservation efforts even made it into currency last year, with the Royal Mint producing a coin featuring an engraving of a red squirrel. But Charles' bond with red squirrels goes beyond his formal duties. At his Scottish home, Burkhall, these inquisitive animals roam freely around the house and sometimes inside it. Charles has spoken fondly of how they even rifle through his jacket pockets in search of nuts. Prince William once shared with Country Life that his father is so enamoured with the squirrels that he's given them names and allows them to run around inside the house. The Times of India asked, will King Charles abdicate? We'll answer for them, no. Per their report, these speculations have been rife after Prince William was learned to have held meetings with the king to discuss the future of the throne. According to a report, the meeting indicates only one thing. The Prince of Wales is preparing to take over earlier than expected as his father battles cancer. A royal insider said it would be the best decision for the king to step down now. No one expects his King Charles reign to last much longer, especially because of his health and could take a dramatic turn for the worst at any time. Stepping down now would be the best decision for the monarchy. Further reasoning for the abdication are the prophecies of Nostradamus. The Times of India tells us, a Nostradamus expert claimed that he predicted that Prince Charles would be in his 70s when he becomes the king, but there would be resentments against him. Many Nostradamus experts floated different interpretations. Some claimed Prince Harry would become the next king. Some said Australia's Simon Durante Day, who claimed to be the secret son of King Charles and Camilla, will become the king. As Nostradamus predicted, King of Isles driven out by force, replaced by one who will have no mark of a king. Should Charles abdicate, we'll be sure to bring you the news in a bonus edition of this podcast. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or the app of your choice. And write a review, hit those stars if you're enjoying the show. And Mark Francis, my thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times. <laughs> <laughs>